Hey everyone, and welcome back to more. Ace Attorney. <laughs> it's like going through. What game am I playing again? <laughs> um, yeah, Ace Attorney. Um, so last time. Oh, right now we're in the middle of a trial. That's what's happening. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump right back in. I think we're at a reset. That is not the right save. Hold on. <laughs> I must have moved it by accident. There it is. <laughs> no, that's not right. It. That's not it either. This one? It's this one. <laughs> Whoopsies. It's all good. Well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're really good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime... Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we gotta get past. Obstacle? Yeah. Motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. One more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that... Oh, the, the kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never lie. Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. Okay. Yes. I got all the. I needed a chapstick or something. That day, five years ago, I dreamed of it every day. This picture, it reminds, it reminds me everything. Bridge looked just the same, just like then, five years ago. Like it could fall apart, fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Ha, huh. sorry buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It's true, I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. <gasps> what? Your, your girlfriend, huh? How old is Dahlia? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Dahlia Hawthorne. Valerie's little sister. W what? Are you serious? So she is her little sister. Girl, let her go. Right. Shut up. Come closer, and I'll kill her. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. So who fell off the bridge? The detective back then was Valley of Hawthorne. At first I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but... If it was to protect her little sister, I could understand why she did it. Wrong! No protect sister! Valley betray me! Betray us! What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. All make-believe. Kidnapping too. Uh, make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend. I love my teen angel. Ugh, did he actually say teen- my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. I do anything she says, anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says. H hold on a minute. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie too. Valerie was in on it. 
Dahlia's family's rich. Jewelry business. We get one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnapped note. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We sent we sent to her dad. Asked for two million dollar dollar diamond. Tell him make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew the she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you're planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman. Oh, she betrayed them. She wanted the two million for herself. That woman, Valerie, she'd do it for real. Did she? Did Dahlia actually fall? And she survived? She shoot at me for real. Me and Dahlia. I was shot in the arm. Dahlia. She jumped in the river. Oh, he was shot. And she jumped off. Oh. And she survived. Jump. You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. Could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. That makes sense because they never they never uncovered a body. They can never uncover a body, so. That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off that bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the Roaring River 40 feet below. These five years. All I wonder is, why? Why, why, why? Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forget what she looked like. So I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. I just... Just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just wanted to hear answer come from her mouth. That's all. That's why... That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, Zebra Boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls. Where is it? Huh? Where is what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No, really, I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. Oh, Dahlia had it and that's when she fell in the river. Dahlia. That day, on the bridge. Dahlia put it in backpack. And she fell with it. Or it fell with her, I guess. Now gone, with Dahlia. Gone forever. Into Eagle River. Disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now. We're ready. We're about ready to go. <laughs> Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne. Never found her, my sweet Dahlia. They never found her. Swallowed by river. Gone, Dahlia, my teen angel. Your teen angel? How old was she anyway? Just 14. Oh my god, that's what I was wondering! I was like, how old is she? If this was five years ago. 14? I guess you were robbing Krayles before diamonds. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two mil. Oh man, oh man. Angels these days. Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way takeout to death row. Is Dolly Hawthorne an angel? Or is she really a... It's time, kitten. Looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet. Two million dollar gem. This is ransom for Dahlia. 
Training wheels come off now, Mia. We gotta strike while the iron's hot. That's one of my rules. Remember it. How the heck did she survive? They said the current's strong. Oh my god, she has 14. <laughs> hmm. But it makes sense. I was wondering, like, wait, how come he doesn't recognize her? But he couldn't even remember how his sister looked. Or how her sister looked, so... Maybe she forgot how, how Dahlia looked. And if she was 14 when it happened, five years later, she matured, I guess. I guess you look different. I don't know. <laughs> what? My chair is, like, floppy. Oh! I forgot to put my camera over. Oh, that's not it. Uh-oh. Hopefully you can hear me. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, I kind of accidentally muted my mic for a second. Alright, we're good. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Terry, Mr. Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Y yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best. Hmm, you're a brave young lady. Not this again. Can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her client off the hook. However, try to pin the crime on an incident student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. That's all. What person, what possible reason would a girl like this have for mur murdering a policewoman? Hmm. It's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figured that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence of a motive? Uh, yes, of course, I think. Ha, huh, you're still acting as, ta as a tame... You're still acting as tame as a kitten. Kitten. <laughs> Mr. Armando. Listen. Lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside while your guts are twisted into knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so. But I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Um, excuse me. May I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course. Mr. Judge is ready at any time you like. I like... I like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why... I... I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm, I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. Looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her. Click. She lights... lights right up. Well, very, very well then. Let's hear what the witness has to say. <laughs> I, I was out of the country until the year before last. When I entered college, I'd never been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago, or kidnapping a poor girl, I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm. Out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Indeed. You're up to the bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow I have to tie her with it to this case. Out of the country year before last. That's not what I want to press. I wanted to press, press. So what country were you living in? We were all living abroad, but after my parents were killed, it was a brutal civil war. She had to try to make her way, way back home alone. I lost everything. Didn't even have any personal identification. What kind of sob story is this? What do I do? Should I press her for details? Um, it doesn't seem like it has anything to do with the case yet. Something can do about her claim to have lost her all her identification. 
We'll do now is wait for to find some other evidence about her real identity. Very well, very well then, Miss Foster. Please proceed. I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? If I if I need to, I'll come back to it. So, what made you decide to go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just love being outdoors, picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. You don't look like much of a hiker to me, but you do look like a digger of sorts. Eagle Mountain is a two-hour drive from here, and no trains run through there. Plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went there once with the College Hiking Club. I fell in love with its stark, desolate beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. Didn't know you were such a goth. By the way... What's the name of your college? Prosecution adjusts to any questions that involve the witness's private life. All that matters is that a, she is a material witness to a crime. The witness does ne doesn't need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious in intent. Thank you. She's really gone too far. Hmm. Miss Faye, you're turning on thin ice here. Hardly said anything. Talk about sensitive. Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the tr the scratches on the tr trunk of the car. Well, that's unfortunately, Miss Fay. Your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? The witness came to the police station once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that at the time, an officer showed her this photo. Hmm. That seems like a rather serious mistake. Huh. That's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. That's not fair. That wicked inmate. I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, that's precisely why he harbored such anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client, he forgot what the detective looks like. Like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Sir Falls is kind of forgetful. Can I... Let's press harder. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What do you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification rate. Quite right. That is why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He clearly, he's clearly a bitter man. It's bad. Mr. Falls' reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Uh... Shoot. Um, I feel like this is kind of important. Mm. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna have her at it. Your Honor, what the witness just said now was tremendously important. I'd like to add it to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and mentally unbalanced one as w at that. That testimony helps to further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's not why... Enough. Witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. I guess I'm lucky- Oh, I guess that's what she added. What do you mean by lucky? Well, it's February now. Everyone's wearing scarves. 
had actually worn a white scarf like you said, then you yourself might have been killed. Hmm. That would have been a terrible loss for this world. Ha. Huh. Looks like you pressed too hard this time, kitten. Shoot. It's Armando. Looking around, you're gonna get it lose sight of the fish line. I didn't realize that's the statement I was adding. I thought I was adding something else. She said. She's not deaf. Sometimes you have to know when not to talk. Crap. You knew about that incident. But weren't you out of the country until the year before last? Well, I saw a report about the escaped convict on the news. They had an in-depth report about his whole history. So you were still living abroad five years ago, is that right? Yes. Can't let her get away with these lies. Listen to me, she's neck deep in this whole in this whole thing. Somehow you're just going to have to get her to show the, the court her true self. Hmm. Okay, let's go back to this. Because this is the only other thing that I could have pressed on a bit more. Witness, answer my question. I'll even repeat it for you. What country were you in? Your Honor, this line of questioning is quite childish. What country she was in and how many languages she may speak are irrelevant here. What we're here to evaluate is whether this witness has any connection to this case. I've lived abroad ever since I was a little girl. That's why I could never have known Mr. Falls or Detective Hawthorne. Yes, I think we established that point. Yes, indeed. Well then, shall we add to what you just stated to, to the official testimony? Yes, please, Mr. Judge. Actually, I didn't know either the victim or the defendant. The only thing I got new I got is this... This. Okay, let's press this a bit. Let's see what she says here. You didn't know either person. Are you certain of that? Yes, I'm afraid I'm rather shy around people. Hmm. Oh well, that can't be helped. Why is he just agreeing with everything that comes out of her mouth? The first time you saw either of them was when they were on the bridge, correct? Yes, it really was a coincidence. So I entered college. I had never been on Eagle Mountain before. Hmm. Okay. Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, you're talking about this scarf here, eh? Yes, that's it. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. Her now. Just don't mess up. That's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. W white? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Right, it looks blue. Well, it was a foggy that it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but there's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is the note. Witness, have you ever seen this note? Note? I, uh, no, never. It's top of secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. Ah! I just spilled tea on myself. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hmm, I wonder about that. <laughs> it wasn't that much. It was like a drop. What do you mean? This note shows that Mr. Fall's instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for identification. White scarf? Ah! 
<laughs> Witness, you know what you knew what this note, note said, and it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. Uh, uh. Well, Miss Foster. No. Order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that were knew, that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say, one more person? That's right. A person that no one could have suspected. I figured it out, kitten. Yep. <laughs> the person that knew the contents of the note was... Oh. Hang on there, kitten. What is it, Mr. Armando? Here, I made some special cafe con leche for you. I put in plenty of sugar. <laughs> what? Drink it before drink it before it gets cold. Don't be shy. Um, why are you doing this? <laughs> Your brain needs stimulation. Drink some of this and then think it over again. Listen, keep messing up like that, and you're going to get the judge mad. Miss Faye. Don't just stare there. What? Wait, I was wrong? What? Who was I supposed to present? Uh, okay, hold the phone. What? What was I supposed to present? Oh! I didn't see that! I was so tunnel visioned! <laughs> oh my god, this is what we're supposed to present. And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne. I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. You really are finessing game. You really are. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this name. Tell her this time. This is her name right here. What's this? So who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne. Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The, the dead? Thalia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You, you don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago when she fell off the bridge and was lost in Eagle River. However, her course was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old, five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster. I believe that's the same age you are. Uh. Even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying. <laughs> but I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? <laughs> Everyone's crazy now. <laughs> They're going crazy. Ha, nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three, three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit and run arsonist. I, I understand. <laughs> if I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now's my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth squirm. Hmm. <laughs> Witness, just who are you anyway? Uh, I'm... I didn't think it would come to this. 
That's enough. You don't have to say any more witness. Yes, I understand. What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an omission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue this matter this far. You don't... You don't mean... Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Ha, huh, looks like the kid knew. He knew a train identity from the get-go. No way! But then why? If he hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so we made a little trade. Let me introduce to you... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. But... I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well. But... Well, as you can see... Why? Why did you... Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. It very much does. <laughs> oh, it very much does. What? <laughs> she was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of a victim. And now we're finding her acting suspiciously at the scene of a, another murder. Really, Miss Faye, I must say your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an, in on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you? Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. Even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious, her big sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? W well, you see... I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Huh. I think you need a little push in the right direction, Ken. The defense is prepared to su present evidence supporting our claim. Uh, that wasn't me. It was this guy, this crazy coffee addict. <laughs> yes, I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Huh, what makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your prodigy looks like she's wearing bullets. Sweating bullet bullets. I am sweating bullets. <laughs> Wait, I am sweating too. I'm really hot. I need to take my jacket off. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Not to me. The rashness of youth. How charming. This is coming from someone younger than me. Now then, let's not waste any more time, Miss Faye. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? This. What is this? Is this the defense's idea of a joke? If so, I certainly don't get the punchline well, Miss Faye. Oh, that was... The rashness of youth. The rashness of youth! Oh, what? That's not what I'm presenting? Oh my god. When's the last time I saved? That wasn't the motive? I... Oh my god. Okay, what... What was I supposed to present there? Does she not have a mo- We have- I mean, I thought it was this, but apparently not. I think, I think 
We have to lose this case. But I don't know if it's here? Because obviously she shows up in that, that case in the beginning. She, show, she shows up again and I was like, finally got her. If I remember correctly. So is this where we lose? I don't know. Uh, but it's I can't back out. I don't have I have to present something. Talk to Dahlia, tell her the whole truth must come out. Maybe it's the note. The story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time, the whole truth must come out. Valley Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal the whole the world to the world the whole truth. The whole truth! There, there was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. Terrific story, Miss Faye. I feel like fiction, that is. And lie in the court, Miss Faye. What was the secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dalian, Valley, Hawthorne, and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh, yes. I know the secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, I believe they'll explain a lot of things, such as the nature of the important secret between Miss Hoth the, between the Hawthorne sisters. Uh. Very well. I'll grant your request for further testimony. I know it'll be painful for you, but can you enlighten us once more? With once more, my little pe maple leaf. What? <laughs> yes, I'll try, Mister Judge. Putting on the old charm over time, Dahlia. This will be the last time you hide behind your womanly lies. Five years ago. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a rare diamond. My sister Valerie brought it into, brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by showing me off the bridge from behind him. Behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my money, family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And we're to believe, after all that, she murdered her sister? Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. Huh. If we're not allowed to fight, let's twist some arms. Listen up. We still got that info. That ace up her sleeves. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've already forgotten. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right. It was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. Anything Dahlia says. Yeah. And Valerie too. That's it. Fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. I wish I would be off the bridge from behind. Surprised, but I was afraid I might be. Should I just present here? I can't. I can't. I probably can't push her buttons too much, right? Um, hold on. Let me press this and ask more information about the diamond. Third, the diamond is valued in the neighborhood of two million dollars. Thank you, Charlie, for the connector. 
two million dollars. It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a, pink, of a pint, pint of milk. Hmm. Two million dollar pint of milk. I don't know what to think about that. The defendant demanded that her sister, Valerie, make the exchange. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. By the way, I wanted to ask you, Mr. Edgeworth. What do you think he wanted to make the exchange up there on the mountain? If he ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. In a place like that, it would be easy to tell if he was being followed. If only one entrance to the mountain, he was ensuring his safety. What a wickedly clever man that Mr. Falls is. Yeah, right. It was all your plan. Anyway, Valerie brought the diamond to the mountain and... She shot Mr. Falls in the arm. So Mr. Falls tried to kill me by showing me... Let's ask about this. I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, when Mr. Falls was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. I was dazed. I turned to try to run away, but Mr. Falls tried to turn to grab me as well. I ran past. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second. He made a large bloodthirsty grin. Bloodthirsty gr grin? Ooh. <laughs> in the next instant. I advise the court to remember that the river is 18 feet deep with incredibly swift. I was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I had been carried away by the river to a strange place. I forget that day. Crumbling bridge, nowhere to run. Then just one little shove from behind, that was it. Before my sister could catch me, I fell into the river. Family's money. And that's why you hid your identity. Yes, I only told my sister. Valley, Valerie Hawthorne, eh? Yes, she's the only one who knew about me. Meanwhile, legally this witness has been deceased for five years. I, I didn't ever want something like that to happen to me again. That was a dangerous thing to do, considered you were being held hostage. Yes, but... Actually, that saved my life. What do you mean? You see, Mr. Falls was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow, I just knew he was going to use it. I knew he was going to use that knife to kill me. That's why my sister shot him. It was to save me. Hmm... Did you and Mr. Falls have a relationship? Yes, as a tutor. You were tutoring him, Mr. Falls? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Falls came to the house to tutor me. That makes sense. Five years ago, she was only 14. He probably came up with the kidnapping plan during that time. The Hawthorns are in the jewelry trade and are quite wealthy, you see. Hmm, quite the clever fellow, that Mr. Falls. Did I hear him right? Did you just call Mr. Falls a clever fellow? Huh. I wonder what I present. I don't think I present this diamond yet, right? And that new identity was Melissa Foster, right? Yes, my sister helped me get the official paperwork taken care of. Makes sense. Without an insider's help, all, doing all the paperwork would have been impossible. Only person left in the world that I could count on. And you think I killed her. There's no way I could. Well, when the truth for this witness, too. Once the truth about the stage kidnapping comes out, everyone in the court will know how much of a Jezebel she really is. She has to prove that the kidnapping was a hoax. I have to prove that it's a hoax. The map? 
You said I missed Sturb Falls, pushing into Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. But it's true! I felt a push on my back. Concern of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry, but I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said that's hard to believe. I should have said that's impossible. I impossible? I asked the court to recall the condition of Dusky Bridge, now and five years ago. Okay, so I was on the right pace, I just didn't present the right picture. But That bridge hasn't changed one bit in the la these last three or five years. If someone had pushed you from behind, as you have claimed, she would have fell on the concrete. Instead of being carried away by the river, you would have been smashed by the bedrock below. Most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very mo notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Ah! <laughs> Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. You're right! If the events occurred just as the witness has testified, the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Ugh! I... I, uh... You see, I... Just a moment, Your Honor. It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back of the end of the bridge. What? What do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's possible that Mr. Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwillingly pushed her off to the, the side of the bridge. If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? N now that you mention it, I do remember now when I fell off the bridge. My skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. Order! Order in the court! It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Fortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's possible that Mr. Falls... Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> Oh! Look how tall that is! If she were pushed off, that would have caught her. Right? Your Honor, of all the answers are all the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. No! But let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Falls had been shot in the right arm. Uh, and more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. Ugh. <laughs> so Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge. This is clearly impossible. Gah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Order! Order! What's the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? <laughs> okay. Indeed. What do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. 
My sister was there to help me. She had her gun in handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been su suicide. Perhaps. Still, that's exactly what you did. You're probably confident that you could handle the swift current. But even more so, the witness had much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what, is, what was it? What was so important that she wanted to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of the Eagle River. Yeah. Five years ago. Something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie bought, brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. Ah! No! It can't be! Yes, Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The two million dollars. She was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river. With the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Why, that's... that's simply ridiculous. Order! Order, order! Your Honor, five years ago, the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? It's possible. <laughs> There's real 14-year-olds out there. <laughs> this woman is a demon. And there's one more person who helped, her, who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping. Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavy, heavily on her conscience for the past five years. Sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister, Dahlia. And then she told her what she was planning to do planning to do. She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your pl demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. <laughs> Who is that? Laughing at a time like this. Forgive me. It's just hilarious. Witness, is that you? You amuse me, woman. Miss Mia Fey. You certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally. You have the evidence to back it up, don't you? Evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. At a 14, I plotted it with my, with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence to at least show that. Hmm. Well, Miss Faye. Okay, this is where I lose. I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye. Are you stupid or something? Huh. How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? Don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I'm forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Of course you are. Is this it? Is it really over? The girl made a fool of me and there's nothing I can do about it. Huh. Without evidence, the trial is over? Who decided that? Mr. Armando. Come on now, kitten. Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. T testimony. 
On the day in question, Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. Fall's stolen car and then went to meet with him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Yes, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. If there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who's the one person who could testify to, the, to that demon woman's crimes? <laughs> My client? Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness? Yes, we'd like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant. There's only one person that can shed any further light in this situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne. Or whether it was in fact her younger sister, Dahlia, disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. And that person is... Terry Falls. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what is your take on this? Why not? The prosecution has no objections. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. Okay, I really need to get some water. <laughs> Be right back. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? Um, I don't believe it. No way! Dahlia died five years ago! Valerie betrayed me! Mr. Falls, I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but the one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive, and you were used for two million dollars. That's not true. Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want to answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? It was, was it Valerie Hawthorne or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia, Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised. She promised never ever betray each other. Terry? Dahlia? It, it's true. It, it's true, you're alive. You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth, the real truth. I, I believed in you. I shouldn't need to say it, you already know. But there's one thing I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. The... Yeah. I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls. Yours will, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Witness. Eek! I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, Water. Please, water? Hmm. Can't talk. Need water. Huh. Oh well. I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitter than hell itself. Wah! That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of Bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on Bridge. I watched my car from Bridge. I never put no body in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked. She Then she left. That was... That was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. Do you think she would do the same for you? That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Well then, Miss Faye, please receive your cross examination. This is how you want to end it. <laughs> is this how you want to want it to end, Mr. Falls? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence. There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten, I think. <laughs> wow, thanks. Thanks for your support. Okay. 
the car. Okay. According to the notes, the meeting was supposed to take place at 4.30. You certainly arrived early, didn't you? It was raining. Already dark, too. You waited on the bridge for 30 minutes. Mr. Falls. Eagle Mountain. That spot. Strong, strong memories. Why did they just clam up? Who could it be? He's hiding something here. You're quite early, so you waited on the bridge, correct? Yeah, I like waiting. I'm used to it. I'm sure he is. Zebra Boy waited five years to ask a single question. To find out why a woman betrayed him. To him, 30 minutes must have been like a blink, an eye, blink of an eye. You were watching the car. That bridge. Other side is broken. Nobody can come from there. So, I was watching Carr. <sighs> what else were you expecting him to do? I suppose that's the obvious thing to do, but... Something's bothering me. I'm getting that feeling, a contradiction. I wonder what was the other, what, what's on the other side of the broken bridge anyway. No one lives there. The small shrine up on the mountain, but that's it. Anyway, nobody came! No car, nothing. One, one coming came, she stood in front of me. Addiction. Wasn't Wasn't he standing the opposite direction? Uh is this too early to do this? But I don't know. I don't know what I present. This or this? No, that wasn't right. Okay, if not, I'll present the picture. Yeah, okay. I didn't know which one I had to present exactly between those two. Those two kind of like co coincide with each other. So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge. You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well then I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? What? 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 <laughs> What's happening? Okay. Oh, I would love to hear your rash rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first. Just look at this photo. It's perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be at the one at the end of the bridge, right? But that's the victim at the end of the bridge. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls. Miss had arrived at the bridge after she did. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Lots of noises. Um, Mr. Falls. Please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. Truth. I got there around four o'clock. It's true. I I had somewhere to go, a special place. Did you go to the special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, it's an old temple about fifteen minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought me a me memento to represent our love. A memento. Five years ago, I hid it under base of tr tree there. <gasps> the bottle necklace! It's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. This little bottle on, the on a necklace is your memento. It's quite charming. But it looks like... But it looks empty. Your Honor. You heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at 4 o'clock. But then he left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. Oh, that much time. Dolly Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. No! Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. Still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. Oh. Huh? 
Mr. Falls. What's going on? <gasps> That's enough, please. Witness. I promised her five years ago. If it ever happens. That we can't trust each other no more. Then. That we're supposed to drink. Bottle. <gasps> no! Stop the trial! Your honor. We need a recess. I... I was stupid. I couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank... this. No! We're so close! Just a little more. I was going to prove your innocence! No, don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls. Mr. Ar Armando. Thanks. Or the coffee. Mr. Falls! Get a medic! You got a dead man there! What are you doing? <laughs> oh, so that's how it ended. So that's what how she got away with it. So my first trial ended suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners. Only losers. I ended up with a wound that cuts so deep into my soul. I never I thought I'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person. The true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne. She left the courtroom with a secret smile and a demonically sweet face. Unbelievable. Unforgivable, that witch. M Mr. Armando, you were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It it's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're going to make my coffee all salty. I, I knew it. I knew it wasn't cut I wasn't cut out for this. Mia. Don't you get it? You can't cry yet. What? <laughs> what the hell is happening? <laughs> the only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. M Mr. Armando? No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time. Then you file them away and eventually forget them. One year later, in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. Right. And that's how they finally got her. Only after that did Dolly Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. It was finally all over. At least that's what I thought at the time. I'm sorry, is he in a hospital bed? It was like an IV. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. Oh, that's the end of the episode? Ooh. That was a short one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never mind. No wonder the trial was so freaking long. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, okay. Well, that's it for now. That was exciting. We got to see a young Edgeworth. <laughs> 
Um, it was nice to see his face again. Um, so, and now we get to see what the beef was about between Mia and Dahlia, I guess. The beef. Interesting. They finally got her. And then now, now I'm wondering what's what's happening now. Like, why is she coming back at this point? Again, she was already convicted. Um, well, I don't know. I guess we're going to find out eventually. Um, but yeah, that'll be it for now. Uh, very exciting. Um, to It seems like we're getting to the end. I feel like this is the last episode. It's giving me final episode vibes. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll, we'll see you. But yeah, that'll be it for now. Um, I guess we're going back to the Phoenix. It was fun playing video again, too. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you again. Goodbye.